Well, it's very good to be here. And today I'm going to talk about why video visits promote efficient practice and are good for the well-being of physicians. Now, I have some disclosures. I have two major academic interests, the first being physician well-being and the second being telemedicine. So I've written three books on those two topics uh, that uh, you can see here. Now, I want to start with a story. We all know that patients love receiving video visits. There's been uh, an enormous number of uh, projects and evaluations of patient satisfaction over many years. What we don't know so much about is how physicians cope. And I want to tell you the story of one of my residents that I'm supervising at the moment. Um, this young woman, who I'll call Dr. Smith, has been working in our resident training clinic for the past six months. And whilst she's obviously a really good clinician, she's had great trouble keeping up with writing her notes in the EMR. And she's been constantly behind, and it's been disruptive and been problematic for her. Now, because of COVID, literally about a month ago, we switched all of our patients so that we're now seeing 100% of our patients on video. And uh, all of our 25 physicians and psychologists are now working from home. And obviously, Dr. Smith is one of those. And so I'm continuing to supervise her. I also see her with her patients on the three-way video. Um, and we have, we've had some very interesting chats about what it's been like for her working at home. And of course, I'm also at home. Uh, and the things that have, been, that have been, I think, important in terms of uh, well-being have been the, the comments that she's made, first of all, about her notes. She's typing as she sees her patients. She's a good touch typist. Uh, and she's able to keep up good eye contact. Um, so she's actually completing her notes. And she says that's made a huge difference to her, describing herself literally as being happy at the end of the day because she knows she doesn't have to spend another hour or so in the evening completing her notes, and she's going to have more time with her family. She's found also that it's been very interesting seeing her patients. She'd seen a few on video before we switched to 100% video, but not very many. And she's had the experience that many of us have had with patients saying they'd actually rather continue to see us on video after this COVID crisis is over. She's also found that her interviews are more focused and sometimes more intimate, and that patients are very prepared to tell her quite sensitive details about themselves. She's actually able to do her interviews a bit more rapidly. There's less time that is being spent on the rooming process and, and basic introductions. But at the same time, I've been encouraging her to do home visits and literally get the patients to pick up their devices, their phones or their iPads, and walk around the house with them, show them where they live and how they live, uh, what they have in their fridge, perhaps, or what, what they have in the garden, what their passions and their interests are. So like many of us, she's discovered that you can actually learn a lot more about patients by doing these home visit uh, video visits. And then finally, she really likes working at home. She's a young mother. Uh, she's able to see her children a lot more. Her husband is also at home. She likes having lunch with them. And she doesn't have any time uh, traveling to and from the hospital. So, so she has a major group of advantages and, and has been openly telling me that she's now thinking about taking up uh, telepsychiatry as a career after her first month of practice. I think her practice and the practice of many of uh, my colleagues will be significantly changed by the current crisis. Now, what other things are we doing during COVID? Well, we've done a lot of group work. Apart from doing supervision of residents and their education on uh, video, uh, we've been doing uh, groups with patients, and we've also been in groups with other physicians, uh, helping them get through this crisis, particularly with first responders. Now, if we move away from that story and look at uh, what's been happening in terms of video visits over time, there's been four major barriers that people have talked about. The first is patient satisfaction uh, or the capacity of patients to do video visits. And really, that's much less of a problem nowadays. And clearly, the, the second problem of technology is really over, overcome. Uh, you can see a patient uh, on uh, their phone or on iPads or laptops very easily. We used to have very major regulatory issues in terms of reimbursement, licensing, prescribing, and HIPAA. All of these have gone away during COVID, and I really hope that the majority of them are away permanently because they make our lives much easier. And, and finally, the other big barrier has been provider attitudes. There's been a lot of people simply who haven't wanted to change or who haven't wanted to do something different. 
Now, that's been less so as the younger generation has come through in the last decade, um, but it's still a continuing problem. And I think one of the nice things about COVID is that many psychiatrists in particular are having to use video to see their patients. It's just a new thing. It's change. They, they, they honestly believe that they're doing the best thing they can by seeing patients in person. Um, but they also haven't got used to seeing patients on video and haven't understood the many advantages of seeing patients, uh, especially when you see them at home uh, using this type of technology. So let's look at physician well-being now and see how that overlaps with uh, video visits. The, the model that I like using for physician well-being is the Stanford model, um, which essentially assumes that you have multiple pathways of care that link uh, towards physicians who need to actually have treatment or counseling, therapy, coaching, or whatever. Stanford talks about there being uh, three major areas that you need to focus on when you're trying to improve physician well-being. The first is the need to have a culture of wellness within your health system or your clinic. The second is obviously to look at personal resilience. And whilst we know that physicians inherently are very resilient people, you can always learn more about that. Uh, and then the third one is really how do you have a more efficient practice? Now, all of those things are very important, but none of them work if you don't have good access to care. And so that's also very important. You need to have a lot of different ways of, of gaining access to care when and if you need it. Now, Stanton described efficiency of practice as being focusing on workplace systems, processes, and practices that promote safety, quality, effectiveness, uh, and a, a positive patient and colleagues interactions, and a better work-life balance for physicians and for all providers in particular. And so this efficiency of practice is something that we can really look at. And this is where the overlap with video visits come, it, because video visits really do make your practice more efficient and thereby help your well-being. How does this happen? Well, uh, we know that um, video visits save time. The story that I had with the resident now typing her notes during the actual consultation is uh, obvious proof of that. You can save several minutes per consultation by getting your night notes down as you talk to the patient. And it's still socially very appropriate to, to do that. Um, the, the second time saver is in the rooming process. And that actually takes several minutes also out of every consultation. And you simply don't have that with video visits where people just come straight on the line at the appointed time. It also saves money. Uh, clearly, if you are seeing more patients by video, you need to actually have less physical rooms because you can work from home or somewhere else. You don't have to be in a clinic. You can downsize the size of your clinic, literally. Um, and it, it also saves money potentially in terms of administrative time because patients aren't coming into the clinic, don't need to be, be welcomed. You can do all of that uh, administrative uh, important information gathering and payment systems online. Um, and, and also we know that you actually have a lower no-show rate for patients who are being seen on video than in person. For instance, if you have a bit of a cold or some, been some minor problem at home, there's really still no excuse to not go to your video appointment, where, whereas uh, in other times you might have uh, cancelled uh, an in-person appointment. Now, uh, what about other advantages? Well, clearly um, the fact that we're able to be more flexible as providers is very important. And that flexibility is both uh, across time and geography. So we can practice when we want. We can work in the evenings or weekends. We can do other things during the week. And uh, we're not tied to the nine to five schedule that we have been traditionally. Um, and equally, we're not tied to having to work in a clinic. We can work in our homes. Uh, we can have patients being seen wherever they want as long as they have privacy. I have a great many of my patients literally see, that uh, see me in their cars because cars are actually probably the most quiet and most private place you can find as long as there's no one else in them, of course. Now, what about relationships on video? There are several factors that are rather different from seeing somebody in person. Firstly, there's actually an increased level of intimacy that may, many patients find when they're talking to you on video, because there is no doubt there's a slightly increased distance, both physically and psychologically, on video. But that distance can actually provide safety for patients. The obvious example is of a a female patient who's been raped coming to see a male uh, physician. Um, clearly, they're going to be more threatened talking about that rape in an enclosed physical room with the, uh, with the physician than if they were on video. Now, 
obviously that leads you on to another advantage in that relationships are actually more equal. Not only is there this slightly increased intimacy, but you can also be both there with the patient in the room, as well as being an objective outsider. And I certainly do this when I see children with their families. I will frequently ask the parents to describe uh, what's been going on with their child, and I'll ask the child just to sit and listen. And I'll tell the parents that it's really up to them to manage the child whilst we're talking. And so I get an idea of actually the parents' parenting skills by objectively watching them while still being part of the conversation and, uh, and, and in the room with the actual family. So I think the relationships are, are an area that we have to really think about, and particularly when we see increasing numbers of patients in a hybrid manner, both in person and on video, and where we have uh, differing components of relationships and perhaps a broader overall relationship with our patients and more knowledge of our patients as a result of seeing them in this hybrid way. So uh, the other thing that is a big gain from uh, video is the ability to do home visits. I mentioned this a little bit earlier on, uh, but I like to get my patients to pick up their phones or their iPads and show me around the house. I like to meet their pets, their family, if they're happy for me to meet them. I like to have a trip around the garden. I like to see what their pictures are, learn a bit more about their passions. And I can learn a lot more about patients doing these video visits at home. Now, what about certain groups of patients who seem to particularly like video or do well on video? Well, obviously, children uh, is one group. Children love this. They can't understand why we don't uh, see them on video all the time. That's how they see their friends. But then also other groups of patients, patients who are avoidant, um, who are anxious, uh, particularly patients who have PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. There's been a lot, a lot of really good studies from a VA in particular actually showing that a good way of engaging patients in care is to start seeing them on video and then gradually uh, gain their confidence and encourage them to join groups and other in-person therapeutic situations. Um, so whilst that sounds a bit counterintuitive, actually often using video is a good way to start. And finally, uh, and psychiatrists often don't like to think about this, there are a lot of patients who actually don't want to see psychiatrists in person. Uh, we are associated with a lot of stigma, unfortunately, as are other mental health professionals, um, and people don't necessarily want to come and sit in our waiting rooms. And so for many patients, this gives them the opportunity to see us and, and obtain our expertise from their homes without the need to be potentially outed by turning up actually in an outpatient clinic. So I think that's a very major advantage of video visits. People talk about video visits as being a little bit more tiring to see patients than uh, actually seeing them in person. And I think that's true to a certain extent. But if you actually think about your workflow and you use, say, for instance, three screens um, and have uh, easy ways of moving from one screen to another, from video to the EMR to any other programs you might want to use, then that actually is a way of reducing your cognitive load and reducing that feeling of, of being tired. There's a big advantage in terms of teamwork and the fact that you can bring in people, you can bring in families, family members who aren't necessarily in the home or, or close by. Um, you can bring in colleagues. Um, you can have you know, almost unlimited numbers of people joining your meeting for whatever purpose you want. From a physician's point of view, uh, another advantage is that we can have a wider choice of practice. We can work at several different locations. We can do just inpatient work, just outpatient work, see only patients with particular disorders, and essentially select the type of work we want to do more easily on video. So I'm going to sum up now. There are a lot of advantages for providers uh, actually doing video visits. There are clear time savings. There are cost savings. There's the improved quality of our work through gaining more knowledge about patients and being able to interact more easily with certain types of patients. We actually, on the whole, have better relationships, particularly in this hybrid environment where patients can choose to see us uh, at uh, their convenience. We have tremendous sudden flexibility. We're not used to working when we want to work. We're used to working much more in a traditional business hours environment. And this allows us to actually be freed up um, and to work at different hours and at different places. Female psychiatrists in particular, seeing uh, patients with forensic backgrounds, uh, have often reported how much safer they feel uh, in this situation.
Clearly, there's an advantage with teamwork and our ability to work with our colleagues. And I think we've really got to, got to study this more. I think uh, that after COVID is finished, uh, and we don't know how long that's going to take, of course, uh, we're going to find that patients are going to want to continue to be seen like this. And that for many psychiatrists and other mental health professionals in particular, as well as other physicians who are, who are using video, this is going to be a tipping point for them. Finally, uh, we're in a really unusual environment right now with COVID, where all of the regulations that have been barriers to uh, telemedicine in general have been literally thrown away. I just hope that the majority of them will stay away and that we'll be able to develop policies and convince the, the relevant uh, regulatory agencies that uh, this is really a time and a silver lining that we can get out of a COVID crisis by increasing the number of video visits that physicians are able to give to their patients.